Yes, uh, today I've got a new headgear, as you can see, uh, just uh, to make sure that uh, the sound as we record it comes out as clear as possible. I, is everyone doing good? We want to thank the Lord for his blessings, and at this time we would also want to thank God for even giving us this opportunity. You know, sometimes uh, we just take it for granted that we'll see each other next Sabbath, but today God has just reminded us that uh, indeed things, so many things can, can happen in between. Um, I was speaking to someone yesterday, they didn't appreciate the gravity of, of the issue, why the leaders of the church have chosen to say, let's uh, stop or only close the church for today. I think uh, uh, according to our accounts, we may be approaching about 20 individuals now. We have had, uh, we have had COVID and um, some, have gone away, some are here, and we just want to thank God that um, wherever we are, God is taking care of us. And we also want to also pray for Gordon. Gordon is in hospital, but it's not due to COVID. It's something different, but uh, we hope he had a good night's sleep, and we continue to pray for him, not only him, but also the others that may also uh, have gone through all these challenging times. This morning, uh, we just want to thank God for this day of prayer and fasting. We will learn, hope, obviously, more in the afternoon of why prayer and fasting, why is it so important and why is it so key even in our own lives. But uh, we thank God that we have got another day which shows the start of a new quarter where we are coming in and praying, fasting and praying. You know, when a church fasts and prays together, something happens. We're listening uh, last week uh, to our all night prayer and which whose theme was when people pray when God's people pray something happens and we pray and praise the Lord that indeed things will continue happening since last year in our prayer uh, in our prayers uh, the GC prayer ministries and also even uh, looking at the week of prayer and um, the Yes, the other prayer and fastings that we've had, they are all concentrating on the three angels' message of uh, Revelation chapter 14, starting from verse 6 to verse 12. And Eliana has just read the, three, uh, the third angels' message. So first of all, these uh, angels, they are flying in the midst of heaven with a, and they are shouting out with a loud voice, indicating universality of this message that is going to be all around the world and the speed and the clarity of what this warning it, uh, to this world before the second coming is. Because Jesus is coming again. And you know, before he does, he, we need to be warned. We need to warn others that indeed we need to stand with Jesus. Because if we don't, then we are going to have problems. The two ones. So I'll try now to explain them so that uh, hopefully they will inspire you. Okay, so what uh, is happening in South Africa? Um, there's a certain guy by the name of Neville. Neville is, uh, is, is an Adventist and he lives in South Africa. And what he did is he started what they call the cell phone evangelism. Cell phone evangelism is when Neville prepares uh, some, some studies on uh, in uh, prophets and all that and he sends them to people and i understand he's sending them to over 3000 people now every day they are receiving those messages but what is more inspiring is there are people who are receiving these messages who are then taking and spreading these messages even further there's a lady by the name of anne marie anne marie is not a normal what you would call a normal person is it where maybe yes let me just rephrase that is not anyone that you may consider and say, you know what, this one is a preacher. This one is one uh, who can spread the word of God. Why? Because first of all, she, she had the kid in failure some years ago, some 16 years ago. And when she had this kid in failure, uh, her kidneys failed. And then also her limb, she had to be amputated. I think it was from above the knee. So she, she had, she's amputated on her right leg. You, you will see it on the video as I send them out later. And then on top of that, she also became blind due to that kidney failure. So this lady who is blind, who does not have a, a her right leg, what is she doing? She receives these messages from Neville and she's 
passing them on to her friends. How can a blind person pass messages? This is where I was saying, if this cannot inspire you, you can see, you can hear, you can do all this. This blind lady every day, she's passing on those messages to others. And so this, this lady was interviewing her to say, so how do you do it? And says, okay, I've got this phone, uh, okay, which is a, a talking phone. So it talks back to her. So as soon as she receives the message, then she goes on to that message and then she selects the message. So she'll be just listening to say, which one is this message that she has touched? And then she sends it across. Which one is this one? Then she forwards it. A blind person without any limb, she's doing her bit for the Lord. The next guy also in this same uh, program as well is uh, dyslexia. And his name is Karel. Karel is uh, someone who said, okay, I'm going to receive from Neville, but I'm not going, going just to send them as they are. I'm going to do something to them. I'm going to, to turn, because Neville said, it's, it's even better if you take this message, present it yourself and send it so that when your, your friends and family are listening, they hear, oh, okay, it's Jabu's voice, or it's Anita's voice, it's Jane's voice, it's Jenny's voice, so that they are familiar to say, oh, it's Jenny doing this. So now Carol, is, um, uh, Carol rather, he is dyslexia. So what does that mean? He can't read easily. So they, they come in scripts. So, but then he can't read and present. So he said, he takes time to try to memorize as much as he can. And uh, what he memorizes then is going through over and over it again before he starts recording. And then he, then he records and then he sends it out. This was the guy who, was, who ended up as the connection between how Adventist World Radio became aware of this self and evangelism. Because the president of uh, uh, Adventist World Radio, when he went to visit Zambia one of the times, and as they were going, there was, uh, uh, I think, one of these uh, conferences, so there was no accommodation at all anywhere, except, so they looked and looked, they couldn't find an accommodation. Then they heard that, okay, there was uh, another accommodation, a lodge, which was about an hour away from Livingstone, that is in, in Zambia, just by the Victoria Falls. So they said, oh, okay, an hour is, is not too bad. So they, they booked there and they went and they traveled. And when they got to that uh, place, this uh, pastor is saying, I'm just worried. Why, why is the Lord sending me here? We want to be in Lusaka. We want to be in Livingstone. We want to be where the people are. But then the Lord was sending him there. And then as they got there, it was quite a very rough road. By the time they, they got to that place, they are so tired but they were just refreshed and then uh, and excited when they heard about this lady who was their hostess. So this lady was saying, who was the manager of the, of, the, of, the, of the lodge that they went to, they said, oh, me, you are Seventh-day Adventist. Me, I've got, uh, I'm receiving these messages from an uncle of mine who is Carol. So is the Carol dyslexia guy, is the one who is giving to her uh, to his own uh, uh, niece. So I, I get them every day and he's sending these ones across to me. And then the president says, oh, show me, how does he go about it? And then he says, every morning I get this. And um, uh, Carol said he gets it from a certain guy by the name of Neville. And then he said, what? And then uh, this lady was saying, now I'm actually preparing to be baptized as an Adventist, uh, but I'm still studying because of this that he's doing. So I'm just saying, if these two individuals cannot inspire us to do something for God, I don't know who can. Anna Mary, the, that blind lady, without one of her legs, she's doing something for the Lord. Carol, dyslexia is not stopping him from doing it. What is it that is stopping you and myself for, from doing something that the Lord wants us to do? You know what, my brothers and sisters, do something for God. You can say that whatever you're doing, oh, no, this one is too small. This one is too feeble. You never know how the Lord is doing. So from there, then the president went uh, and they visited Neville. They had a meeting. And now it's now a worldwide, it's now adopted even all over the world in the Adventist world as it were. As Elder Anita mentioned, last week I was very ex excited because I launched uh, the, the first of the uh, podcast 
my first ever, ever podcast, Jabu Talks Prophecy. And I was so excited that uh, to reach this milestone because I've been mulling over it. Yes, uh, Laura and Sherina have always been uh, encouraging me to say, no, do something, do it on podcast and all that. So the technology and all this. So what did I do on, um, then I immediately sent it out to 341 people on my phone. So I sent it out there. And oh, the feedback that I've been getting is just amazing what God is doing. My sister was the first one to come and say, oh, you know what? I've, uh, I've listened to it and I've shared it with two of my, of my, of my friends already. A former colleague, he, he has been, uh, we've been separated for a long time and he's not even Adventist or my sister is not Adventist as well. He said, it's insightful teaching. Thanks Jabu for blessing us. Another one uh, from Zimbabwe said, Kunyason Zwisisa, Elder Risai, who, yes, we, yes, we understand what that means. And maybe Laura as well, since she's half Zimbabwean. Kunyason Zwisisa, which is God, um, which is saying, now I can fully understand. And it says, God richly bless you. Another one was just saying, great message. God bless you. I learned something. Another one said, amen, was sad when I failed to connect. Uh, but now, uh, thank God, uh, the audio was great. Keep it up. You are doing well. I'm blessed. This was uh, Caleb, who is uh, my 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 cousin, and he's an Anglican priest. So he's the one who responded this way. And uh, yeah, one of the colleagues yesterday, yeah, uh, I didn't even know whether he had listened to it. He, who is a Jehovah's Witness, just said, you know what? I agree with your take on Daniel. And I said, oh, okay. So there's someone listening. So what am I saying? I'm uh, yes, and another lady even here on this platform, she said, oh, as soon as I received it, I shared it with my family and before I even listened to it. So yes, what I'm just saying is, God, let the Lord inspire you. I don't know how he's going to inspire you. You might use this, you might use something else, but don't spend the whole week, don't spend the whole day without doing something for the Lord. God wants us to do something. Let us pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you as we reflect on your love, as we reflect on, your, on what you have done for us. Lord, you came down so that we could also come, go and warn the whole world of the danger that is upon us. We are just talk, going to talk and encourage each other on worship. That is all about worship. And Lord, as we do so, we pray that you will be with us. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so as we just wind that other bit up, when you read and you go through Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6, it says, yes, sow your seed in the morning and at evening, let your, your hand not be idle, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or whether both will do equally well. So here we are just saying, do something and plant and the Lord is going to bless it. You never know because God never, never, never gave you a responsibility to be responsible for the germination. Your responsibility is just for sowing, for plantation, for planting. Leave the germination to the Lord. He knows when the heart is ready and he knows what is going to, gem, uh, to germinate. Yes, I remember also Jenny saying, okay, as soon as you send it to me, I, I send it to her. She's studying with someone as well. So uh, I'm just excited. Uh, as you can see, uh, this, uh, our, our message today is on the third angel's message. And um, thanks, uh, Eliana, for reading so well. There were some hard words there. But we thank God that uh, we can all uh, talk about encourage each other on this day of prayer and fasting. It says from verse 9 that Eliana read to verse 11, a third angel followed them and said with a loud voice we said that the 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 volume of this uh, voice is indicating that it has to be clear and it has to be uh, uh, heard by everyone and the angel is saying what is the angel saying he's saying if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives the mark on their forehead or on their hand they too will drink the wine of the of god's fury which is poured full into the, uh, into the cup of his wrath, they will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest or day, uh, uh, no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image or for anyone who receives the, the mark of his name. When you read this, 
I think you shiver and say, whoa, 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 it's going to be hard times. But don't worry, we are going by God's grace to try to see what has God done and what provision has he made for all of us. You know what, when it comes to this end time, it is all about worship. It is all about loyalty. Whom I, are you loyal to? Satan has always wanted to be worshipped. He has always wanted to be obeyed. In heaven, he turned the loyalty of a third of God's angels to himself. You remember in the Garden of Eden, Satan wanted to turn man's loyalty from God also to himself. And even in the last days, as the angel is saying, if anyone who worships the beast, so the beast, okay, we will get to know, okay, as you study Revelation chapter 13 as well, it reminds you of, yes, these two beasts, but you know that the power that is behind them is the power of the devil. The power that is behind them is devil, is Satan himself who wants to be worshipped. Now, when we read how men was tempted at the beginning, Genesis chapter 3, verse 3, uh, uh, sorry, starting from verse 1, it says here, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? In another version, it says, has God really said, you shall not eat of um, any tree of this garden? But when you go to God's instruction in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, one thing that uh, I may just encourage you, especially today, since you're at home as well, there are quite a number of verses that are coming our way. So please have a pen and paper ready, because as uh, we said in the, in the podcast, you need to check it out for yourself. You cannot just, uh, just gulp everything that's coming your way to say, oh, okay, it's Jabu. Uh, I know Jabu. I can trust Jabu. No, look it up yourself and read it for yourself. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, it reads here, then the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to turn it and, uh, to turn and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, you may eat, freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you, you eat of it, you shall surely die. Is God's instructions clear? I say, yes, it is. God is saying, you know what? Oh, this garden is yours. Eat everything except for this one tree. Because on this one tree, when you shall eat it, you shall surely die. Instructions are clear. Yes, I can say they are. What was Satan's response? When you go now, Satan now is, is, is cunning, is testing, tempting um, Eve now. He says, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. What did God say? God said, you shall surely die. And the serpent is coming and saying, you shall not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that, uh, that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. She also gave her husband, to her husband with her and he ate. I can say that Satan is a liar. Satan is a liar. Satan is a deceiver. Satan is all about trying to deceive us. You know, my brothers and sisters, if it was left for him, all of us would just be deceived. All of us would just be lost. Even, okay, where do I get this? The Lord himself, Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 44, John 8, 44, it says here, he was speaking now to, to, to these people who were not uh, uh, believing in him, the Pharisees and the scribes. He says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Wow. Yes, when he is lying, he's speaking his native language. 
So if it is Shona myself, when he's lying, he's speaking like Shona, Jabu, as if you are speaking Shona. Anita, as if you are speaking in Ichewa. Yes, uh, Eunice, as if you are speaking in Nyanja or, or, or whatever language you speak, this is when Satan is saying lies. This is what he says. Right, let me play with my technology a little bit again. Can you see that when you look in the mirror of this particular thing, you will say, wow, what an apple. But what is behind it is what? Mm, is something else. Yes, what is your reaction on this one here? Yes, uh, just unmute and tell me something. Talk to me. What, uh, how would you react when you see something like this? That's cruelty, man. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Elder Anita, what, yes, what do you say? Oh, dear. All right. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. What do you think? How can someone do that? Mm. That's wicked. Um, That's wicked, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Abuse. George Floyd in America. Uh, okay. Abuse. George Abuse. Floyd and all that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What if I, I, I then say that you are all deceived and show you that? Oh. <laughs> oh so you yes. thought that someone was stepping on that kid, isn't it? Yes. Uh, but yes. then can you see oh. the second picture now? Yeah. He's yes. just he <laughs> <laughs> it's just a no, little boy. What? Right. <laughs> All is not war. We have been, <laughs> we have been So you can All see that. Yeah, yes, when you look at this first picture, you say, Ooh, what? But when you look at this, the guy is actually laughing and he's just playing. It's himself. Oh, you know what? This is what we get in this world today, isn't it? If we are not careful, we'll be deceived and say, Oh, things are these, things are these, things are this. And this is the danger that we get in today's world. Things are not as they look like. So here, the, the third angel is, is warning us against worshiping the beast. He's saying we should just worship God. But you know what? There's so many things that are happening. And there's so much that is happening, even creating uh, confusion, even in our own eyes. Why should we worship God? The Bible says, uh, actually, the first angel who came in in uh, Revelation 14, verse 6, first angel came with a loud voice and shouted, worship God who created what? The heaven, the earth, and the seas, and the what? And the springs of waters. So in other words, the, why we are worshiping God is because he is the creator. God, we worship him because he's the creator. We should worship him also because he has redeemed us. You know, when Adam and Eve fell, God came and also redeemed us or rescued us once again. I hope that when we are talking of worshiping, this is why we worship God. Sometimes we end up worshiping God because of the good things that he has done for us, isn't it? But today we are just reminded that even sometimes you've passed through the valley of the shadow of what? Of death. Things are not going to be uh, uh, honky-dory all the time. Things are going to be different, but God still remains our creator. God still remains our redeemer. Therefore, those two, if they are the basis of our worship of God, it's not going to change anything. He remains our redeemer and he remains our creator. But then there is a problem because God wants to be worshipped. Uh, God is saying, worship me. The angel is saying, worship God. But Satan is also saying, I also want to be worshipped. That's where now we come to this worshipping of the beast. Because when you are worshipping of the beast, you are not worshipping God. You are worshipping someone. You have been deceived or have been tricked to worship someone or something that is not what God wants us to do. In other words, the mark of the beast or the worship of the beast contrasts with the worship of the true God the worship of God, the creator. You know, this Satan is, is so daring and he's so cheeky that he even wanted to tempt Jesus himself to worship him. Ooh. 
Who is Jesus? Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the one who created. But then when you read in Matthew chapter uh, uh, 4, starting from verse 9, uh, from verse 8 and 9, Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, I said there are many verses coming your way. He says here, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Listen to what he says. Uh, verse 9, all this I will give you if you bow down and worship me. Wow. He is now enticing or tempting Jesus to say, come, let me worship, um, worship me and I'll give you all this. As if he has forgotten that Christ himself is the creator. And what did Jesus say? In verse 10, he says, Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Therefore, this is so key and this is so fundamental, my brothers and sisters. The only person who should be worshipped is God himself. You shouldn't worship the beast. You shouldn't even think about worshiping the beast, but you should only worship God. Now, in calling us to worship God as the creator, you see that in the first angel's message, 14 verse 7, it quotes directly from the, from the fourth commandment, which, uh, uh, yes, for people to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Let us just go again and remind ourselves of what this uh, uh, commandment says. Um, uh, that is in uh, Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 to 11. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. We always talk about the Sabbath, and sometimes we argue about it. Sometimes we have got heated discussions. You know what? There's no need of arguing about the Sabbath. We just need to go back to the word of God and let the Bible and the Holy Spirit talk to us. And if we have got a teachable spirit, it will be as clear as whatever can be. So it is not an, a, an issue that we should be fighting against to say, oh, no, 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 uh, this is what, because the Bible is clear. And even the beast or the message that came from, it's so clear. Uh, listen as we go through. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, uh, starting from verse 8. I think most of us here are Seventh-day Adventists, and I think we have uh, gone through, uh, uh, talked about the, the Sabbath. But you know, sometimes we are also reliant on others. We are reliant on our teachers, on our elders to say, oh no, they are able to answer. But the Bible says, and uh, we are reminded that we should be able to give a reason for the faith that we have. Therefore, you need to give a reason of why you believe uh, in God's word and why you believe that the Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, is the word of God. Verse 8 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the earth, uh, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This is the fourth commandment as we know it. It is the only commandment that gives us a reason of why we should keep it. The fifth one is the one, the only re, uh, commandment with the promise what you'll get after keeping it. But this one, God says, why are you keeping the Sabbath? For in six days, God created, made the heavens and the earth. Therefore, it's pointing to God who needs to be worshipped as our creator. Is pointing us back to say, I am the creator. When you stop, when you, you keep the Sabbath holy, you are reminded that I am the Yes, I am the, the creator. I'm the one who created, and I, I'm the one who rested. Now, some people will dismiss, and they've dismissed the Sabbath and say, you know what? Oh, whom is God? Oh, God is talking to the, to the children of Israel, isn't it? Therefore, it means that the Sabbath is Jewish. Yeah, these are the Jews who are coming now from, uh, from, from Egypt, going all the way now from Canaan. So yeah, the, the Sabbath is okay, but it's just 
for the children of Israel and is, uh, is, is, is Jewish. But I would like to differ and to disagree with that and say, let us go and find out where did this Sabbath thing start? When did it start? Come with me to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And when you talk of Genesis, we are talking of the beginning. And when you are talking of Genesis chapter 1, creation, chapter 2, creation. And when you look at it, this was even before sin entered the world. Listen to what the Bible is saying. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 uh, up to 3. It says, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he had rested from all his work, um, from all his work which God had created and made. Wow, this is happening. Even before sin entered the world, God is saying this, my seventh day is the day of rest. My seventh day is a day that I've blessed. My seventh day is a day that I have set aside. In other words, the Sabbath is a special day, not because of what Jabu is saying or what you are saying, but is of what God is saying. God is saying, I've made this day a special day. Oh, God is saying, the Bible is telling us that God rested. Was he tired? Of course not. How can God be tired? He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. Have you ever thought that the first full day that Adam and Eve spent on this earth was the Sabbath day? Were they tired themselves? No, but God was saying, you know what? Every week you should come and you should rest on this day because it is our day of special convocation. So what do we get? Three things that we get from the Sabbath. God rested, God blessed it, and God made it holy. It's not you and me who make things holy. It's God who declares things holy. You know, we're just reminded recently, the Queen's uh, uh, Platinum Jubilee. We, we have never had a holiday in uh, at that time. But when the Queen declared that is, this one is my holiday because she's the one in charge of this, of this, of this uh, country. It became a holiday because she's the one who declared it. So when you talk about God's creation, it's God who created us and is the only one who can declare which one is his Sabbath. Do you know that even before the Ten Commandments were given in uh, Exodus chapter 20, when as soon as these children of Israel started on this journey, they, uh, they started on this journey uh, from Egypt to Canaan, God reminded them. That's why even the Sabbath is saying, remember, is something that you knew and you are just being reminded. God reminded them of what the Sabbath is and which one is the Sabbath is. And also that God is so particular of what day it was supposed to be. Because he could have said, you know what, uh, just count from any time, just count. It's starting counting from one up to seven. The seventh one is mine. But God was so particular. What did God do? This one, you just need to take note of it and go and read it. We don't have time to go through it. But it talks about, uh, in Exodus chapter 16, starting from verse 1, it talks about something that happened there. The children of Israel had just started. They were now, yes, uh, yes the Bible says it was in their fifth, 15th day of their second month in, uh, on this journey. And they started grumbling to say, where is the food? Yes, we, are, we used to be eating, uh, we, should, we used to eat around the pots in, in Egypt, but you have it's sent us into this wilderness so that we could die. The Bible also mentions that this is happening before they get to Mount Sinai. They are in the wilderness of sin, and this is where they are. And what did God say to Moses? Don't worry, I'm going to feed them. How am I going to feed them? I am going to, to, to provide for the manna that is going to fall. And this manna is going to fall on the first day. There's going to be manna. Each one should go and take an omer, which is a measurement for each person in their house. So if there are two of us, like we bind myself in here, we just get two omers of, of that. If there are seven of you in the house, you'd go out in the morning and get 
two, uh, seven omas for, for, your, for your family. And every morning you should go. If you wait until the sun rises, then uh, the man is going to melt away, but you should, you should go and gather it early in the morning. And you know what? Some people would go. And God said, just eat what you have gathered for that day. Don't keep others until tomorrow. But what do people do? Knowing people, they kept some for tomorrow. Say, ah, oh, today I'm feeling a bit tired. I'm not going out tomorrow. So I will stop here. And what happened? Tomorrow it was full of maggots. Yes, it was stinking, that manner that they'd kept overnight. But here is the miracle of, the, of, of what was happening. On the first day, that would happen. They would take just enough. If, if they keep it until the following day, maggots, uh, yes, and, and it, would, it would spoil. The second day, they would just get what? But then God said, but on the sixth day, you should get double the, the manna that is going to fall. And God said, because tomorrow is my Sabbath. You know what? This Sabbath thing is not my Sabbath. This God's Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. God is saying, I'm the creator, and this one is my Sabbath. And God is saying, tomorrow, then uh, on the sixth day, gather double. Because tomorrow, there is no manna that's going to fall, because that's my Sabbath. And it would happen that uh, on the sixth day, they go. Women and myself will gather now, not two omas, but four omas, because we know that the next day is Sabbath, there's nothing falling. But knowing people as I know them, what do they do? Some of them also went again on, on, on the Sabbath, looking for that, looking for that manna. And, but the miracle of it all, and showing how God took this Sabbath thing so seriously and important, and that he was so particular, the manna that was gathered double on, on day six, sixth day, didn't spoil on, 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 uh, on day seven. Hallelujah. We want to praise the Lord because he keeps us. He doesn't just take it. He wants us to follow his footsteps. And from there, you cannot say that, oh, I wasn't so sure which one is the Sabbath day. You knew, you knew which one is the Sabbath day because God himself had put a marker in to say this one is my day. Now, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. God is saying again, hallow my Sabbaths, and there will be a sign between me and you, and that you may know that I am the Lord, your God. So when it comes to worshiping God, just to be reminded that God is our creator, we should just go and worship him on the Sabbath. Ezekiel 20, verse 12, uh, okay, on the same chapter there, verse 12, he says, moreover, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Sabbath is the one that acknowledges, that makes us acknowledge that God, you are our creator. We are just obeying you because you are the one who has created us. Therefore, let, it not, uh, uh, let us not be deceived, my brothers and sisters. The Sabbath is not Jewish. The Sabbath is started from creation. God himself rested after he had created. It's not from Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai, they're just being reminded to say, don't forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath. So let us quickly uh, see what was happening during the time of Jesus. When you read Luke chapter 4, verse 16, another verse coming your way, Luke 4, verse 16, it says here, he went, that's Jesus, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as his custom was, and he stood up to read. So when Jesus, uh, when you wanted to find Jesus on a Sabbath day, where would you go? You wouldn't go to the, to, the, to, to the market square. You wouldn't go anywhere else, but you'd find him in the synagogue. Why? Because the Bible says it was his custom, as his custom was. Jesus also addressing them. He says, you know what? In Mark chapter 2, verse 27 and 28, he said to them, the Sabbath was made for men and not men for the Sabbath. The son of man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. So in other ways, he is our Lord. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. This Sabbath was made so that we could benefit. You, and when you look at the Sabbath, it's so clear. But sometimes we just need the Holy Spirit to convict us. Because it's not how logical things are. 
but it's just about how the Holy Spirit is co co convicting us and uh, reminding us of the Sabbath and what God needs. Jesus, uh, even his uh, followers, on the day that he was crucified, the Bible re reminds us, yes, in Luke and in John, to say they rested. Okay, it was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to, to begin and the followers even rested in, in obedience to the commandment. Which commandment? The fourth commandment, the fourth of the 10 commandments. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. The disciples, Jesus has said something and the disciples are coming to him now and say, Master, tell us when, when are these things shall, will be and when shall be the sign of your coming? And the Lord here is saying in verse 20 and say, pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. Therefore, Jesus was saying, Jerusalem, you, your Jerusalem is going to be distracted, but you pray such that your flight or your running away will not happen on, in winter or on the Sabbath. What does that show us? It shows us that even Jesus, as he ascended to heaven, he knew that his disciples, his followers, would still be keeping the Sabbath day as he was referring to this uh, destruction of Jerusalem. When did the destruction of Jerusalem take place? It took place in a 70 AD, and Jesus had already ascended to heaven. When did Jesus ascend to heaven? If I may ask Bible students, do you know when Jesus ascended to heaven? Which year did he ascend to heaven? Unmute and shout something to me so that I can engage with you a little bit. Uh, today on Zoom is only one way, you know. When, when did Jesus ascend to heaven? Bible students, talk to me. I'm not going to move here, you know, uh, unless I got an answer. <laughs> go, 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 go. Okay. All right. That prophecy of, uh, of 2,300 days, you remember that? Okay. Yes, we'll, we'll touch it a little bit more in the, in the podcast. So Jesus ascended to heaven in AD what? AD 31. So it was in AD... AD 33, oh. isn't it that? Okay, he ascended in AD 31. AD 31. So in other words, here Jerusalem was then destructed 29 years after Jesus had, had ascended. But what we are getting here is, uh, yes, what we are getting here is that Jesus was saying, make sure that your, your flight is not going to be on a Sabbath. So he knew that 29 years after it gone, people will still be keeping the word. People will still be keeping the Sabbath. So he didn't abolish it. And actually he says in Matthew that, think not that I've come to what? To, yes, to destroy this commandment. I have not come to destroy, but actually to what? To fulfill. And the fulfilling was, him showing us how we need even to keep the, the, the Sabbath day. Okay, what about the apostles? Jesus has ascended now. The apostles. In Acts chapter 17, verse 2, we are reminded of, of this one, that Paul, we know Paul, isn't it? Paul was not a disciple when Jesus was here, but Jesus had an encounter with him on that road to Damascus. Acts 17, verse 2 says, Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures. Where did we get something similar to this? Of course, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, where it says Jesus, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue. Here we are hearing, then Paul, as his custom was, he went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them or from the scriptures. So my brothers and sisters, when it comes to the Sabbath, God is inviting us to be here with him to observe the Sabbath. So now you are wondering, what about uh, when you look at Paul? Paul is saying, as his custom was, he was doing that. Paul was just imitating what Jesus was doing. He was the creator. He rested at creation. When he came here, he was also in the synagogue worshiping. Whom, about, whom are you imitating? Yourself and myself, whom are you imitating today? I urge you to imitate Jesus. Then you say, oh, in the heaven, uh, in the new heaven and new earth, are we going to still be talking about the Sabbath? 
Isaiah 66, verse 22 and 23 reminds us about the same thing. Isaiah 66, 22 and 23. It says here, for is the new heaven and the new earth, which I shall, which I will make. Okay, uh, let me repeat. As for the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come uh, to worship before me. So as you can see, Sabbath and worship, they go hand in hand. Sabbath is the time when we should come and worship God. God is saying here, even in the new earth and in the new heaven and the new earth that I will make, you shall still come and worship me. Because it will always remind us that God is our creator and God is the one who has made us and that uh, he is also the one who has redeemed us. So the question that we may all be getting now is, so what happened? How did things change? Who changed it? How come today is only a few people who know about the Sabbath truth and worship God on the Sabbath? When we read in the book of Daniel chapter 7, we hear of all these animals that are coming out. The first one was like unto a lion, which had two wings. And the second one was like unto a bear, which had three ribs on, in his mouth and was raised on one side. And the third one was like unto a leopard, which had four heads and four wings. And the fourth one is the fourth beast that Daniel couldn't even describe or say what it was like, but he just said it was terrible. And it had iron uh, uh, legs and all that. And it had 10 horns. And then the Bible says that out of the 10 horns, there was a little one which was seen coming out, which we refer to as the little horn. And then lo and behold, it had, okay. Then it developed the mouth and eyes like a mouth uh, and eyes of a man. And then verse 25, there it says, and he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and the laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. In Bible prophecy, you understand what we are talking about there is three and a half years, which you, you translate to 1,260. A days, day year prophecy will give us, and that was the time that we referred to as the dark ages when Christians were persecuted. So when you look at it, it says here, yeah, he shall intend or he shall try to change the times and the law. So this little horn is the one that changed. The little horn is the one that changed the, the time and the law of God. When you study the history of the church, you will see that it was only after 636 AD, more than 300 years after Jesus had ascended, hundreds of years after the last day of the apostles had died, that people uh, at the council at Laodicea, they call it the council at Laodicea, that was when the, uh, it is said that the solemnity or the importance or the holiness of the Sabbath was moved from what? From Sabbath to Sunday, but there is no biblical evidence and there's no biblical direction and there's no biblical authority that anyone can change the solemnity of the Sabbath. So all those apostles, they died keeping the Sabbath. I think they'll be surprised. Obviously they know about the prophecies that were happening, but I think they'll be surprised to find out how many people have been deceived how many people have been deceived to worship something that is not God? What is painful is, whilst amongst ourselves we can be fighting to say, no, 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 this one is this, this one is this. But the little horn, the little horn power who changed it, they accept it. There are no questions about it. They are so clear, they accept it. I will read a, a, a passage which you can uh, take note of because it's coming from the convert's uh, catechism of the uh, Catholic doctrine, and it's on page 50. It says here, okay, so it is like a question answer as people are, are pre, uh, preparing for confirmation 
as it were in the Catholic Church. It says, question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath day. Okay, so this is coming from the Catholic Catechism. Question, how do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. They are accepting it. There is no argument. When you read through, there are so many other passages here where they are saying it happened on that particular day, where they are changing all that. I've got quite a few of them quotations here where you, you, you can say, and they go on to, to say, there's another question here. You say, how, how prove you that the church has, has power to command feasts and holidays? He says, by the very act of changing Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of, and therefore fondly contradict themselves by keeping Sunday strictly and breaking most of the feasts commanded by the same church. So in other words, here, yeah, we don't need even to argue between, uh, amongst ourselves because they admitted that indeed it is uh, the, the Catholic church that has changed. It is that little horn power that has changed. But you know what? The topic of this ceremony is, is all about worship. Whom would you worship? Whom would you listen to? One time, Paul, uh, Peter and the disciples, they were instructed and told that you shouldn't even talk about this, this, this name again. We are letting you loose. We shouldn't talk about the name. And then they said, we would rather obey God than men. So my brothers and sisters, today was just a reminder of that worshiping God has everything to do with the Sabbath. It has got everything to do with worshiping him because he is our creator. And when you are worshiping the beast, you are talking, you are, you, you are being taken away from the true worship, which is the worship of God. As we close, we just want to, to say, because as, as Eliana read, it was quite a, a bit scary when she read it. It says here, uh, the uh, third angel, it says, the uh, third angel followed him, them and said with a, in a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and its image and receive its mark on their forehead or on their, on their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which will be poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the lamb. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest or day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. When you recall from the uh, week of prayer readings last November, it came so clear to me and it was uh, also quite opening, mind opening for me when we just reminded that here, in as much as this is scary, but it's just a warning to say, you know what? If you continue on the path of disobedience, this is where you are going to end up. But God has made a provision that none of us should suffer this death. None of us should suffer this suffering. Why? Because that's exactly what Jesus died. Jesus died the second death and Jesus died so that none of us have to die the second death. And if we are continuing in disobedience, worshiping the beast and following him, then we'll end up suffering this. But there is a choice for you and for me. The choice is, Jesus is saying, look, I've done it all for you. You don't have to go through this. If you just obey me, and if you just worship me, I just want you to obey me. And lo and behold, this is not a route for you. So this uh, scary stuff, my brothers and sisters, it's not for us. It's just a warning to say, if you are not worshiping God in his holiness, if you are not worshiping God as the creator, if you are not worshiping God as, a, as our um, a redeemer, this is where we'll end up. So it's just a warning. And as they say, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, isn't it? So as we come to the end, we just want to acknowledge God's, God's love for us and God's provision today. Is there anyone 
Okay, I think we've got these gadgets now. Yes, is there anyone who'd like to say, Lord, I want to worship you in, in spirit and in truth. I want to worship you. Maybe I've, I've not fully understood what the Sabbath was all about, but today I just want to follow you. I would rather obey you rather than obey man. If that's your prayer, please raise your hands. You, you can even raise your 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 zoom hands I, I can see other hands are being raised physically and their zoom hands and they are all that i'm just about to pray please if that's your your prayer let us uh, just raise any hand that you can raise god is watching you god knows exactly what you need and you desire in your heart raise that hand for god's uh, uh, to praise the lord so that we may do our bit to be obedient to the call of God. Let us pray. Our Father, we just want to thank you for the words that comes to, uh, from, from you to us, Lord, this afternoon. Thank you for everyone who has been listening, and thank you for what you have shown us, Lord, the love that you have given to us. Lord, we just want to worship you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We are just reflecting and going through that the Sabbath is just for reminding us that you are our creator. Every week we are reminded that God you created, such that if we, are, we will only keep it and if we teach it, if anyone would knew, there would be no even room for evolution because every week we'll be reminded that, no, 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 I, I, I didn't come from apes. God created me. Every time, every week we are reminded. Lord, there are so many confusion. There's so many deception, so much deception around about what the Sabbath is, that it is Jewish, we have learned that it's not. It's yours, God. It is heavenly. We Others saying it was nailed to the cross. It's another study that maybe we'll look at. And it's nothing to do with the Sabbath because, Lord, they are all your Ten Commandments. And uh, you wrote them with your own finger. They were not written by Moses. They were written on those tablets of stone with your own finger. Therefore, thank you for the Sabbath. And may we get a blessing from this Sabbath as Jesus custom was. We want to imitate Jesus. Be with my brothers and sisters, those that have raised their hands and those that haven't. We pray that, Lord, whoever listened to this word will come to a better knowledge of you and above all, follow you closely and avoid this uh, uh, danger that will fall those who are worshiping the beast and not worship you. This is my prayer in your name. Amen.